Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and also the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. I'm uh, going to be talking a little bit about some very, very interesting passage here I found in John chapter 19, verse 8. Uh, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was more afraid. Talking about the, the, the Jews, the Pharisees, calling Jesus the Son of God or saying that he made himself the Son of God. But before I do, let me just quickly update you on some of the news events that are going on. Quite a few of my friends on Twitter there have been sending me information about uh, the Hezbollah firing rockets into Israel. Also, Israel targeting heavily southern Syria. Uh, again, claiming that they're hitting Iranian uh, proxies over there in, in that region there. Uh, as, as I mentioned to you just recently, Israel is definitely getting ready to go to war with Iran one way or another, with or without the United States' help. And, uh, of course, what was interesting, the Biden administration saying that, that Iran was only weeks away from being able to create their own nuclear bomb. So what is really going to happen? Will Israel really strike and take out Iran? Well, it seems right now that Israel is uh, anning up by striking more and more the Iranian uh, factions inside of Syria, and now Hezbollah beginning to send missiles into Israel. It doesn't seem like it will be long before that situation turns upside down and on its head. And speaking of that situation turning upside down and on its head, you know, I did a message not too long ago about the Gog of Magog, it's a war that I believe that is about to hit us and not just any kind of war. I believe we're really about to see uh, a situation on this earth that is like of biblical proportions. We're talking about archons, fallen angels. We're talking about demons, demonic entities coming on the earth. Maybe even some would say aliens, for example. But you know, I was sitting there listening as I was working earlier today. I just turned on the Bible, um, uh, the uh, and listening to the book of John as I was listening, I was I was it got to chapter 19 and I get to this one passage here where Pilate is uh, actually, you know, trying to tell Jesus he has power to let him go or, or, or you know, or to, or to crucify him. And uh, and some very interesting things got said here. So I want to kind of back up with you just a little bit on this and share this with you and then kind of give you a thought that just came to my mind. Chapter 19, verse 1, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. And Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. And when the chief priests, therefore, and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify, crucify. Actually, the word him and talisai is not actually there. Just crucify, crucify. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. And the Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. And when Pilate, therefore, heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And he went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? And Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Now, here's what I'm, I'm really wanting you to just to see, and just a conjecture. Not so much to try to make a doctrine out of anything, but I, I'm just curious to see if you guys can see what I am seeing here as well. Uh, and then taking into account many other passages that we would read in the Bible that would go along with this, right? Let's first go back and see, look. Pilate, when he hears that saying, what saying? When the Jews said, 
We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate ever heard that saying, he was the more afraid. You see, Pilate didn't take this very lightly. And I don't think that Pilate had it in his mind that the eternal father above, that this was literally his son. But I think that Pilate was more concerned that he was that a son of a Nephilim, or in this case specifically of a Nephilim, one of the fallen angels themselves. And this is why when you look at what Pilate after, he's, he's more the afraid now because the Jews are saying he made himself the son of God. This was something, especially in biblical times like this, this was a very known fact that fallen angels had cohabitated with women and, and, and vice versa with men on the earth there and they'd brought forth children by them. As we even know in the case of Israel, when the children of Israel went into the Babylonian captivity and, they, and the, the Levites and priests, according to Ezra chapter 9, had mingled the holy seed with the peoples of the lands. Those peoples of the lands were the Canaanites, Perzites, Jebusites, Amorites, etc. And that were the very people that were the children of Anak, according to Numbers chapter 13, which were, uh, Enoch was from a Nephilim. He was from a fallen angel, and his children were known as Nephilim, sons of the fallen angels. So this was not an uncommon thing. And even if, I, and of course, I haven't studied it out, but I know that there is some knowledge of this, some of the Roman different ideology uh, uh, that they had at the time in those days. Uh, Pilate was fearful for a reason. Because it was as if one of the sons of the gods had come down. Now, we know that Jesus Christ was not one of the sons of the God. We know he was not a, uh, a son of a, of a, of a, of a Nephilim or, or a fallen angel or anything else like that. He was the true son of Almighty, the father of all. He was the son of this, the eternal one, which was greater than anything, any fallen angel or anything. He should be afraid. I agree, he should be afraid. But I don't think that this is what Pilate was thinking about. And that's why Pilate went on. And when he says here in verse 9, and he went again to the judgment hall and said to, unto Jesus, Whence art thou? In other words, where, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. It was, you know, I guess in Pilate's mind, they had captured the son of a fallen angel. And that he was fearful of what would happen, what the retribution would be. There was a fear in a, in a, you know, that, that struck the people in those days. Especially when you begin to look, there's another place in the scripture here where uh, Jesus is talking about how the princes exercise authority, but the greater ones exercise authority over the princes. Could he have actually been referring to, to again, Fallen angels exercising over the governments of the world, much like what we hear about even to this day here. I think this is what we're actually looking at. You know, Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. He actually uses word verbiage there. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. Right? He uses some verbiage there that is uh, literally from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2. I don't know if this is going to pop up on your screen because sometimes this doesn't change when I'm recording it. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, right? So we're going to highlight this up into the to, so you can get the different um, things. Here we go. Principalities right there. Archaea. Chief, for uh, applications, order, time, place, rank, right? Okay. Um, powers, exo uh, exosia, and let's see, against the rulers, cosmokarot, the world ruler, Satan, all right? Um, 
We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Archaea, which is where you get the archons from. Spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, and we see those things. And let me let me see if I can pull this other one out there, where Jesus speaks about the prince. And let's see, great. Uh, no, let's see here. Maybe it's princes there. I'll have to see if I can pull that down fast enough for you here. Get there to the New Testament where it speaks about these things here. Um, let's see. Yeah, here it is right here. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25. But Jesus called unto them and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Like I said, could he be referring to fallen angels in that case? Archons. Uh, you know, I don't really know. But, you know, even if we go to, for example, if you go to Matthew and we go to chapter, what is it, chapter 24 there, and you get on down there in the verse there, remember what Jesus says there about uh, uh, as it was in the days of Noah. All right, let me sorry, pull that part up there again. Let's see here. But yeah, here, no, it's not no man that angels, okay, but as the days of Noah were, here it is, chapter 24, verse 37. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one will be taken, and the other the other be left, right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right? The point is, though, is we know that in the days of Noah, they were the Nephilim in the in the land, the the Nephilim, the fallen angels that came down and cohabitated with the men and or the women on the earth, and of course that's what it's talking about when it's talking about marrying and giving in marriage, and the eating and the drinking was the eating and drinking of human blood. They devoured the, the peoples of the land, according to the book of Enoch. So I'm just fascinated by the fact that Pilate was the more afraid when he heard the saying that Jesus was the Son of God, and he made himself the Son of God, right? That bothered him. It bothered him so much that Pilate goes back into the courtroom there, or courtyard, and he says to him, Where are you from? Hence art thou. Friends, we're about to see history repeat itself, I believe, on a scale not seen since biblical times. And I can only imagine that as the scripture speaks about man's hearts will fail them for fear, those days are upon us. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, bitch shoot Israeli News Live. Yana's channel also, Rise Up Children of God, is now on bitch shoot. She's doing an interview right now with Deborah Tavares. Uh, it's sure to be a blessing for you. Yana is going to be doing more and more of her own videos over there, getting you guys back in the swing. We'll be trying to load up some of her old videos that got taken down off of Rise Up Children of God originally. I'll try to put a link in the description below for you. And we thank you. Thank you for your support of the broadcast. And uh, thank you for uh, your prayers, your love, and your kindness uh, that you show. Be praying for each other. For we are truly living in the very last days. Nothing about going back to the witnesses again. That's something that's been on my mind here. So I've been prayerfully looking at that. And uh, I go right back into those passages as well. Stephen Benoni here with Israeli News Live. Good day.